there is a, a new library uh, in preparation called Data Parallel Extension for C++. Yes. Can you explain the motivation of this new library? Definitely. Yeah, D Data Parallel Extensions uh, for C++ is a project that we're working on that uh, enables developers to take advantage of the power of, of vector computing accelerators on their machines. Uh, the most common kind of these is GPGPU systems um, where people can use their graphics cards effectively to do computation instead of graphics problems. It turns out that there's a class of computation problems, um, in particular embarrassingly, what we would call embarrassingly parallel uh, computation problems where we want to do a similar operation uh, many, many, many times to, uh, to uh, floating point numbers typically mm -hmm. uh, and do them really, really quickly. If you have a problem that looks like that, GPUs tend to be a, a pretty good solution. Um, Data Parallel Extensions to C++ has a couple of, of key goals. Uh, because there, there are technologies today that people can use to go program the GPU. Yeah, CUDA, for example. CUDA is a great example. Yeah. OpenCL is another yeah. one. Um, and these, these are actually great, great solutions. We support them on Windows. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we're happy for people to use them. With DPC++, we're trying to uh, come in and solve a different uh, or, or maybe a, a, an additional set of problems for our customers because the feedback we've gotten is I, I love to use these other tools to get the the computational throughput that it that it lets me get, um, but it's pretty complicated. So help me with the complexity, and also uh, debugging is a problem. Debugging is is a key problem there. Yeah. Uh, programming model is also a problem yeah. though, and uh, also how can we make it less uh, less choosy or, or or you know about the hardware that I want to use? Um, yeah. One of the great things about uh, you know, traditional benefit of Windows is that I can just write an app that's an x86 or x64 app and I can deploy that and it runs anywhere Windows runs. It gets a little bit more difficult when you start saying well if you want to do the GPU you gotta have this or that kind of GPU and and then it becomes a much more difficult uh, value proposition for somebody that just wants to leverage that power and have it work wherever Windows works. So those are the two key problems complexity and uh, having it run where Windows runs. The way we've, we've tried to address these is uh, DPC++ provides a programming model that's really deeply integrated with, with Visual C++. So it's part of the C++ environment. Um, it, comes, it, you know, it comes just kind of built in as the way we're trying to design it. Um, and uh, so that when a developer sits in front of their C++ tool, there are a few extra little, little keywords that they can use in order to just say, this piece of code right here this, this loop, this function, whatever, go run it on the GPU. Um, so that's great. In terms of execution engine, we're using DirectX as our execution engine. Um, and what DirectX buys us is DirectX has this chunk of functionality called Direct Compute. And what we find is that by mating this programming model built into, that we want to build into C++ with an execution engine that's DirectX, which is built into Windows, uh, anywhere that DirectX 11 is available on Windows, your code will run. Um, and then we can do interesting things like if DirectX 11 is not available, then we can still run that code on your CPU. Uh, and, we're, and we're kind of looking at different ways to, to do that. Um, right now, we, we're experimenting with a couple of approaches. One approach is to use PPL yeah. and use multi-core. Another approach is to use SSE instructions yeah. to, to vectorize uh, those things. And yet another approach is to try and do both at the same time. And you can kind of you can both you know, scale out with, with PPL and also vectorize to go deeper um, in terms of, of ar uh, array manipulation. Uh, so these are the kinds of things we're doing, but what we, you know, what we would like to end up with, easy programming model that's built into C++ that allows people to write programs that use the GPU if it's there, and where they have one binary that just works wherever Windows works. Great. Very great. And I suppose when you will ship this uh, new library, you will provide new windows inside Visual Studio. Definitely, yeah. Part of the experience we're working on also has to do with what is the debug experience. 
and debugging is, this turned out to be an interesting challenge. Um, NVIDIA has some, some great tooling that they've built, Parallel Insight, uh, that works with their, their CUDA uh, hardware and, and software. Um, but you know, what if we wanted to make this available across a, a class of hardware, across a, a class of DX11 capable hardware? Um, so we're kind of going through, okay, what, you know, technically, how do, we, how do we make that work? It turns out that CPUs have been tuned over many, many years to support debugging as a, as a, as a core capability of what a CPU does, uh, whereas GPUs, people haven't traditionally wanted to do that. You know, uh, you know up until recently, the, the, the consequence of getting something wrong on a GPU is like, oh, this, this pixel's the wrong color. Yeah. Um, okay, well, that's not a, that's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, and also, the way, the way people have wanted to debug this code yeah. is by going, uh, let me point at that pixel. Tell me why that pixel's red. I don't, I don't understand why that pixel's the wrong color. And to be able to sort of see the, uh, the set of, the set of uh, shaders, for example, that someone wrote in order to lead up to rendering that pixel the way it was rendered, what we want to do is provide a more CPU-like uh, debugging experience uh, that's not so much about, you know, why is this pixel red, but it's about, uh, can I set a breakpoint here? And when I set a breakpoint, can I inspect the value of this variable? Or can I evaluate this expression, this DPE C++ expression, uh, within the context of, of my, you know, my current execution frame? So uh, these are the things we're working on in debugging. Uh, as to add to that, uh, GPUs really up the ante in terms of the level of parallelism that they unlock. So on our desktop, we might be used to having an 8-core, 16-core, maybe if you're lucky, you have a 32-core machine. Uh, with a high-end GPU, you have something that looks more like 500 cores. Um, and, you know, a list box is not a good way to represent 500 anything. Uh, so the other thing we're trying to do in the debugging tools is, like, what is the right kind of abstractions to surface to enable people to even cope with that kind of uh, parallelism, mm -hmm. because the traditional models of interaction with your debugger just break down when you start start realizing that you're going with that level of, of parallelism. And there are a variety of tricks. There's things we can do in the UI to help cope with parallelism, and there's also things we can do to uh, to really reduce the level of parallelism to make it manageable while you debug it, so that you can kind of get the algorithm right. And then once you get the algorithm right, you could start scaling it out, and and then maybe you're just tweaking it at that point. Um, but to kind of help you get things right while uh, at a lower uh, runtime complexity. Yeah. Um, also on the performance analysis side, we're looking at what we can do in terms of profiling so that people that are building these applications can do them in such a way that they can understand the performance characteristics. You uh -huh. know, what, what, am I, what am I getting for putting this on the GPU? GPU uh, has some interesting computational uh, benefits. Mm -hmm. It's got interesting memory latency drawbacks. Yeah. Because in order to execute some stuff on my GPU, I've actually got to move data over to the memory that resides physically on the GPU, and there's a latency involved in that. So I have to amortize the cost of moving the data there, computing, moving the data back. Uh, typically, I have to amortize it over a large set of computations so that it's worth my while to do that data movement. Mm -hmm. If I only do a little bit of computation, uh, usually it doesn't pay off because you, you get killed by the data. Um, and so we need to help people understand that, yeah, that's, that's, nice that's an issue. Our, um, switch context into kernel. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's, it's uh, kernel context switches would be another great example of where you have to sort of amortize the cost of what you're doing across these disruptive, or from a performance standpoint, disruptive shifts in context. Do you have some uh, plan about shipping uh, this uh, new library? Uh, the DPC++? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, right now we don't, uh, we don't have ship dates or anything that we're announcing. Um, those are certainly forthcoming. We'll talk about those in, in due time. I can say we're actively working on it. We're really interested in it. Uh, we, we started to show it actually back in November. Yeah. So we've had prototypes that have been working well enough since November, uh, supercomputing last year, uh, to demonstrate publicly. Uh, we're working deeply with the C++ team here at Microsoft mm -hmm. uh, because we want to make sure that what we're doing from a language standpoint really integrates well with, with the C++ language itself. And, and that team, of course, is, is the expert in that topic. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, collaborating with those guys, we're collaborating with the Windows team 
because they the Windows team owns the DirectX stack and we want to make sure what we're doing uh, plays well and takes full advantage of DirectX. So we're collaborating with a lot of teams internally here at Microsoft. Um, you know, I, I would say over the coming months we'll be able to talk more about exactly okay. how we want to get. Them. And um, sometime um, we have some uh, managed developer. Yeah. <laughs> and I suppose uh, managed developer uh, want to uh, address a GPU problem. Uh, Yes. And have you any plan for .NET uh, with GPU? Yes, yeah, so everybody asks me this question. When I show them DPC++, the Data Parallel C++ extensions that we're working on, um, they go, that's really cool. Uh, how does that work if I'm doing .NET? And uh, so this is a question we're trying to figure out. Right now, the plan is definitely full steam ahead on the C++ stuff. Uh, C++ made sense as a, as a first target for us because we're talking about uh, people who care about certain kernels of code performing absolutely as fast as possible. Yeah. And typically people in that segment are doing it in C++ today because they're trying to get maximal control of performance and, and be close to the hardware. So we think we've got the right first target. The question is, uh, we definitely want to make this accessible to .NET. So what's the right way to do that? Uh, the, the, most, uh, the first place I think people's minds go is like, oh, well, we need data parallel extensions to C-sharp or to VB or F-sharp or whatever. Um, and, and that's one way you could go. Uh, another way to think about it is we've been trying to really, and, and we'll start these conversations with customers probably later this year um, as we get uh, you know, the data parallel extensions to C++ more, more on uh, kind of in the pipeline. We'll start to look, look ahead as to, to what may be coming next after this. And... Uh, to me, it's about you know what level you know what's the right level of abstraction to offer. Do people actually want to write these GPU kernels in C sharp? Not sure. Um, would people be okay writing these kernels in C plus plus if they just had an easy way to call that from C sharp, mm -hmm. where I can maybe add a data parallel extension to C plus plus? file or you know whatever the whatever the project entity looks like I can add one of those project entities to my C sharp project and I can call that function easily from C sharp like would that be good enough mm -hmm. um, how do I handle the marshalling of across from the managed heap and and over onto the GPU and back again so there's some performance characteristics mm -hmm. that would be interesting in managed code um, that we haven't begun to kind of ferret out and then uh, if people really care about performance would that, uh, you know, how much calculation do you have to put over on the GPU to make the marshalling cost, which will almost certainly be higher in .NET, uh, be, be worthwhile? Yeah, and I we see. just don't know the answer to these, I but see, we know pe .NET mm -hmm. developers want it. We definitely know that. Okay, it was very great, uh, and I would like to say thank you very much well, for your time. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Bruno. I'm glad you... Uh, came to my office this time. I think last time we talked, we were like in a hotel lobby yeah. in Barcelona or something. Yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, thank you for coming to Redmond to chat. Thank you very much.